Everyone is kind of creeping up on level 20. People are making plays for objectives. We get our line attack off on a Nox. We're gonna get our two off on a Nox. Get some decent damage. We use our th one that's gonna silence her. We're just gonna step out of her silence. Hit her with the two and we're able to get the pick. Hades is on our Ymir. We're gonna see if we can cut him off at all. We use our one, get some damage. Hades uses his silence. He's using his ultimate. We're gonna go ahead and use our three to do some damage. and jump out of there we're gonna use our one we're able to get the pick onto him we're gonna fall back our team is pushing this kepri it looks like it might just be this kepri what a do skibbity boo it's your boy shawnee b gaming and today we have a viewer request to play baba yaga in mid if you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, I feel like Baba Yaga is either a really complicated or a really simple god, all depending on how much thought power you're putting into it. So let's go ahead and take a look at her kit. Baba Yaga's one is Wild Witchcraft. Baba Yaga is going to throw magic forward that is imbued with chaotic qualities. So this ability can have four possible shapes. It can have a left L, a right L, a split, or an oval. Whenever you cast this ability, it's going to take one of those shapes and then it's also going to take on a random buff or a debuff. It can either boost friendly protections boost friendly movement speed, slow enemy movement speed, or silence enemies. The one thing you want to note about this ability is that right above your passive you're going to be able to see the next shape and the next color. You're really only concerned about the shape. Baba Yaga's 2 is her Baba's Brew. Baba Yaga is going to craft a potion made up of three random ingredients. The ingredients could possibly be red, which is going to increase your damage by 7.5% per red. There is the blue, which is going to apply a 12.5% slow per blue. And then there is the green, which is going to add a 7.5% attack speed slow and power reduction to enemies hit for 5 seconds. As you put points into this ability, you're going to get more crafting ingredients per potion. So at level 1 and 2, you're going to get 3 ingredients. At level 3 and 4, you're going to get 4 ingredients. And then at level 5, you get 5 ingredients. Baba Yaga's 3 is Blast Off. Baba Yaga is going to crawl inside of her mortar for protections. While inside, she's going to gain damage mitigation, knockup protections, and begins to build up explosive magic. After one second, the explosive magic is going to explode, launching Baba Yaga and her mortar in the direction that she is facing. Enemies near the mortar are going to take damage. As you level up this ability, the damage mitigation is going to scale from 25% to 35%. Baba Yaga's ultimate, home sweet home. Whenever she ults, her cabin is gonna come crashing down and knock back enemies that are surrounding her. Baba Yaga is then gonna be able to command the cabin for up to eight seconds, using it as a protective shield to create and throw four witchfire bolts from the inside. When throwing the witchfire, it is going to explode on the landing, dealing damage to enemies in the area while leaving behind a creeping path of fire which chases nearby enemies. Enemies caught in the creeping fire are going to take burn damage every 0.4 seconds. As you level up this ability, you are going to get a larger shield whenever the cabin comes down. And Baba Yaga's passive. Baba Yaga's cabin accumulates up to 100 essence over time when it moves and if enemy gods get too close. Baba Yaga can approach the cabin and uses the essence to gain evolving item stacks. Items with a low stack count take more energy. If Baba Yaga has no stacking items, this essence heals Baba Yaga for 0.8% max health per tick. So we backed for our tier 2 boots. You never want to back for your tier 1 boots because tier 1 boots provide you no power. Tier 2 boots provide you a little bit of power. So ideally, if you could get the full tier 3 boots, you definitely want to do that. But we got kind of pushed out of lane, so we're just going to pick up the tier 2. We are going against the Nox. Nox has a combo that requires her to land two abilities on you. So as long as we can dodge one of them, we should be alright. Taking a look at the build, we're going to be starting with Mage's Blessing. Mage's Blessing is going to give us some MP5 and 10% cooldown reduction. Then we're going to be going into the tier 1 of Book of Toth. Then we're going to complete our boots and go back for the Book of Toth. We're dancing with Nox. 
we land a basic attack. She's trying to position herself to use her ability on the wave. Up, oh, she uses her one on us. We hear the dodgy, so we're gonna start backing it up. We're gonna go ahead and use our three to get out of there. Ravana is moving towards our red, so we're gonna loop back through jungle, help him clear the red buff, and then try to rotate back to get some of the XP in middle wave. It looks like Nox and Dodgy also abandoned middle wave to go for the red buff because they left a few minions up. Exactly what I so, in the early game, I like to leave Fountain up. Oh, she just used her dash. We have our ultimate. I think we can really punish her here. We're going to use our three. We're going to use our ultimate on her. That's going to knock her up. We're going to start casting the Witch Fire Bolts. And we're able to get her. Very nice. One more tower shot, and we definitely would have gone down right there. In the early game with Baba Yaga, I like to leave with a couple of potions. I know that her two requires you to have an open potion slot, but we're going to deal with that once we kind of get a few items online. I like to level my one before the two. I do understand that the two does more damage, but I find that it's a harder ability to hit on all the minions. So for terms of simplicity, we're just going to max out our one first, use a couple potions to help us survive the early game, and then whenever we start picking up wards, we're going to place our wards and then start storing a second Baba's Brew. An ally has been slain. So we've just got this wave we got to deal with. So right now, whenever we summon a Baba's Brew, we have no available potion slots, so it's just going to sit in our hand until we throw it. We hear Dodgy. We get hit by Nox's one. Dodgy dashes on us, but we're already in tower, so we're pretty safe right here. We are able to tag Nox with that one, but we really need it for the minion wave. We're just going to hang out here. Dodgy is invading our Harpy. Robin's getting the back camps, and then he might make a play for the red. I don't think Dodgy is really making a play for a red. She's probably rotating left right now. We're going to go ahead and try to help this Ravana out with the red buff. Get some of this gold and XP. Right here, we're going to take the safe route and just loop back and then come up through our tower instead of just walking in mid. Just in case Nox was camping that corner right there. So I'm just spamming, missing middle. Don't be upset if mid comes and gets you. We use both potions right there. Help us clear that harpy. I do find that Baba Yaga kind of lacks the mana early game to clear the harpies, the side camps, efficiently. I always feel like it's a really big risk to move from lane to jungle with Baba Yaga and try to go for a camp. We were going to try to dash on her, then we decided that was a bad idea, so we just turn exactly around, dash in place. So we used our Baba's Brew, and this is from a console's perspective who plays on Savage controller settings. Um, whenever I use my 2 and I push B, B is my cancel button, it is going to store the potion in an extra potion slot. You can only store one potion in one potion slot, you can't store one per slot and have a total of three potions, you can only have a total of two potions. Enemy missing middle. So it is green, meaning that at least one, if not two, of the ingredients are the green ingredient, which is going to reduce the attack speed and power of enemies. All of these debuffs sound really cool and like they'd be super helpful, but it's really hard to identify which debuff or buff you have and use it perfectly in a fight. I find it's best to just land your abilities and then the effects are just additional things that are going to happen. The one exception being kind of the silence on the one. The silence on the one is a very effective yes. thing. If you know your teammates are about to be chased or there's a team fight coming you might want to hold off onto the silence and use it for the team fight. Two blows, two deaths. Dodgy cleans up right. We're probably going to rotate left. An ally has been slain. Enemy 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna check left. Missing mid. That's kind of my fault. Although, I think she backed and then came up left. So it's hard to kind of call that out. We dodge his. We dodge Nox's thing. We're gonna use our beads. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. That's gonna give us a shield. It's also gonna knock them back. They changed how the Witchfire bolts fire a couple of different times. I feel like it took me a while to get used to them this game. They changed how fast they deploy from Baba Yaga. A couple of different times. They've, they've tweaked some of the timing on the ultimate. So I do not play Baba Yaga a ton. So it's going to take me a second to kind of get familiar with this current change. So in terms of the build, we went with cooldown boots. I think we want some cooldown online, but this is probably the only place in the build that we were gonna fit in some lifesteal. So if you wanna go lifesteal boots, I think that's totally fine. Without lifesteal boots, we're gonna have to play very, very carefully. And we're pretty much gonna always have to have mana pots, not mana pots, health pots on us. The first item we built is the Book of Toth. Book of Toth is going to provide us 80 magical power, 250 mana, and 15 MP5. It is a stacking item. Every stack is going to provide 10 mana. 6% of your mana is going to be converted into power. And then once you are at the maximum stacks, it is going to be 9% of your mana is converted into additional power. So at full stacks, the mana goes from 250 mana to 1000 mana. 9% of that is 90. So 80 plus 90, when this item is fully evolved, this item is going to be providing 170 power. Ah, I can't believe she got me. I feel like a majority of my character was not on that circle. Here's coming. We're going to kind of let him do his thing. Help out a little bit. And we're able to get the pick. Thank you, Tyr. Appreciate you. So two more stacks, and we are fully evolved on our Book of Thoth. Once we have Bugatoth fully evolved, we could probably stop buying mana potions. In fact, I just use my mana potion so I can start storing Baba Brews. So now the potion combination that we're looking for is health potions and wards. Once we place our wards, then we start storing our Baba's Brew. You can, so right now we have a red Baba's Brew, which means it has at least one damage, probably two, Why if not all three. With someone so weak? If we wanted a slow one, we could cast our two and then swap the two potions. So if we really like the next one that we get, it's three blues or four blues, because now we're level four on our two. Then we don't want the damage, we want the blues, we can swap them out by pushing the left stick and oh, no. X. Exactly. More work for you to do. We're gonna throw our two, use our line attack to get a little bit of poke onto this Hades. We're gonna have to use our beads. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. We probably should have dashed before using our ultimate. Robin is able to clean that up. We're gonna turn our attention to the Hades. Hit him with the Baba's Brew, hit him with the line attack. And Robin is able to clean that up as well. While we are rotating, they were able to get our tower in mid. We're going to have to rotate back, try to get some of this golden XP. We also have enough money for our next item, which is going to be Divine Ruin. Divine Ruin is going to provide 90 magical power, and it's going to provide 10 flat penetration. It has a passive that whenever you damage an enemy with an ability, they're going to have reduced healing by 40% for 8 seconds. Flat pen is really effective in the early game. I do not think Nox has more than 100 physical protections, so that means our flat penetration is going to be really effective. Right now, I believe we have 49 physical protections looking at the left little stat bar, so Nox probably has a similar amount. The flat 10% penetration is going to, let's assume she has 50 protections, we're going to deal damage to her as if she had 40 protections. So flat penetration right now is acting like a 20% penetration item. In the late game, this is going to fall off. And this item will become less effective, but its passive is very useful. Dodgy dashes in. 
We're gonna try to help. I don't think we're gonna be able to help this Ymir. We're gonna start falling back. Dodgy's pursuing us. We're gonna use our two. We're able to get some good damage. That is her ultimate. We're gonna use our ultimate so we get the CC immunity and we don't get pulled. We're gonna start casting Witch Fires over the wall. Maybe we'll be able to get a pick. Does not sound like it. Is she coming up mid? Yes, she is. Oh, I think we would have had kill potential right there if we didn't get silenced. Gonna go ahead and use our two on the fat stack of archers. Our reds up. We're gonna go ahead and start heading that way. Your right tower is under attack. Our blue is getting invaded, but no concern for to us. I see you. We're gonna go ahead and start working on the wave. Here's pressuring Nox out of lane, so we should be able to kind of rotate to whatever we want right now. We helped here clear the Harpy. Now we're going to go hit our Harpy. Nox is still missing middle, so we're just going to take this time, clear the wave. We don't have a ton of money, and we're pretty healthy, so I don't think we're backing anytime soon. No camps in mid for us to hit, so we're going to think about rotating left. Robin's rotating. Looks like we have He's able to get the pick onto one. I think it's pretty safe to assume that that dodgy probably just rotated out. So we're going to start heading back to mid. We didn't fully commit to the rotation left, so we're not going to miss any XP in mid. We kind of showed face, but didn't really go all the way to the lane. Dodgy just used her ultimate. Maybe she did hang out in this lane a little bit longer than we expected her to. Nox is here, so we definitely want to commit to this fight. We hit her with our two. Dodgy comes onto us. We're going to use our three to get a little bit of separation. We get silence out of it, so we're just going to use our ultimate. Nox dashes in aggressively. Robin's able to clean that up. And we're just going to step back, kind of run away. I don't think we were really going to be able to get that Kepri or Dodgy. Now we're pretty weak, so we're going to go ahead and back, and we're going to start working on our second stacking item. Typically, I would not recommend you stacking more than one item in a game, but Baba Yaga and her passive allows you to stack items really effectively. So we're going to actually be building quite a few stacking items with Baba Yaga. Warlock Staff is going to provide us 85 magical power. It's going to provide us 150 health, 200 mana, and 10% magic penetration. As we get kills on minions or enemy gods, we're going to gain stacks of health and power. Once this item is fully evolved, it's going to provide us 145 magical power, 325 health, and then the 200 mana and 10% magic penetration stays the same. So we're going to have some additional mana from the Book of Toth, and we're going to have some additional health from the Warlock Staff. Both items giving us a decent amount of power, over 140 per item. They are on gold. We're going to see. Nope. We're going to run. Whole team was there. As soon as we got vision, they started moving towards us, and they also got gold fury right as we turned the corner. Hades is the main reason we got Divine Ruin this game. I also feel like a lot of people are going to ask, where should we put Divine Ruin into this build? Divine Ruin can always be slotted in right after boots. It has the flat magical penetration, so you're going to want to try to get it relatively early. Two people on left, we have three people rotating over there to deal with it. Let's see if we can connect any picks. Hit her with her two, that's a backflip. Robin is able to clean her up. Now we're going to turn our attention to the Kepri. We know Hades is all the way over in solo. We use our three to get a little bit of separation. Nox rotates in. We have three pushing two right now. Their jungler is probably rotating in relatively soon. There's their jungler. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. Probably a little aggressive right here. We missed that first witch fire shot terribly. Dodgy tries to ult us, but we are in our ultimate. Exactly what I wanted. Looks like one of the chains connected, so we use our beads. Robin's able to get the pick onto one. We're going to keep fighting, try to get Robin out of here. We miss our two. We hit Kepri with a one. Kepri's very weak. We're going to hit him with our three. 
Hit him with a basic, one or two more basics, but he's able to CC us and get away. So while we're up here, we're gonna go ahead and take the enemy Harpy Camp. Hades is on us, that might have been a terrible idea. We might be dead. So maybe getting the enemy Harpy was not the best idea. We probably wouldn't be able to just walk right out of there if we had not stopped to go for that Harpy. But we are able to finish our Warlock Staff. And after going into Warlock Staff, we're going to be going into Chronos Pendant. So that way we can start getting our cooldown down a little bit. Oh look, more work for you to do. So I think there is kind of a debate with Chronos Pendant. It is super helpful to have the 20% cooldown and the passive that also reduces your cooldown. But it does not provide as much power as some of the other items available to you. So you're kind of at this trade-off of do you want your abilities to do more damage or do you want to be able to use your abilities more often? I feel like Baba Yaga is one of those characters I want to use my abilities more often. Just because there's a chance I could speed up my teammates, increase the protection, silence the enemy. There's a lot of randomness going on so I feel like just increasing the odds or the number of random things that happen throughout the game is probably beneficial. We're going to go ahead and clear this fat wave, start rotating left. Actually, we're going to assume that the four people are going to kill the tier. So we're actually going to go right. Nope, we're going left. I have no idea where we're going. Uh, tier goes down. Even if we made a direct line rotation to him, I don't think we would have made it there in time. And we probably would have showed up just as he goes down. They all would have saw me and then chased me down. If I had to guess. Now that we know that there's not much we can do left, we're going to go ahead and rotate right, see if we can potentially get a pick onto this Hades. Does not look like it. Looks like he's just outside of our range. We don't really want to use our 3 to try to close the distance, because then he could just turn on us and use his ultimate. We're going to use our 3 to get some separation between us and Dodgy. And now we're kind of hiding around this corner, casting abilities over it. Three people pushing us too. It's not a favorable fight, so we're going to start falling back, playing a little bit defensive. Looks like they are about to make a play for Pyromancer. They're probably going to get it before we can do anything. Robin rotates in. We're going to throw some abilities onto this Robin, try to get some damage. We're able to get the pick onto the Neath. We're going to start running away. Oh my goodness, we got body blocked by our own cabin. We're going to use our 2, throw that onto a group of enemies, use our 1, and right here, that was way too aggressive. We used our ultimate when we didn't need to. We used it for aggression instead of defense. I'd say most of the time, you want to use it for defense whenever the enemies are closing onto you. You can use it, knock them all back, and you gain a shield. It's a real, they commit to you, and then you can do a complete turnaround. Right there, nobody was committing to us, so we didn't knock anybody back. Our shield didn't really help with anything. And we missed all of our damage. They were able to just chase us down. I think the better play would have been to get our damage off, and then just hide on that corner, see if they step up to me. If they do, then play from there. If they don't, maybe chase them down. But using my ultimate right there was not a smart play. We are playing with this Ymir, University Hype. I think it's just me and him in this game. We're going to go ahead, activate our three, head back to lane. Our red buff is up, so we're going to rotate there, try to see if we can get some of this gold and XP before tier drops it. Looks like we're going to be able to get some of it. Gold Fury is up. The enemy team just got the Pyromancer. We do have vision on Fire Giant. Looks like they're probably rotating left. We're going to kind of check this corner. Three people in mid. We have three in left. Saji is now on the Freya. We're going to rotate Enemy over, see if we can help out at all. Kepri and Hades are rotating as well. 
Hades gets the pick onto the Freya. We get a little bit of damage onto the Hades. Not the best fight in the world. Kepri has a fat ultimate and is able to save Neath. The fight is getting less favorable for us, but we're still going to try to help this tier out. Neath sees us. We try to get a little bit of poke on a Neath. We miss it. We're going to have to use our three to avoid the CC. Get a little bit of distance between us. We do have our ultimate in case they get too close to us. But I think we're going to be able to just walk out of here. We cast our one. I don't think we hit anyone. We do have enough money for Kronos Pendant. Ymir gets a fat freeze. We're going to jump up. That's a Beads and Aegis from the Nox. We're gonna use our beads. We used beads very late right there. We're able to get her with our one. Hades is rotating onto the mirror. I don't think there's a whole lot that we're gonna be able to do. Their whole team's rotating on the mirror. We're gonna go ahead and get out of there. What shall I do to torment them? Appropriate for someone as powerful as I. On my way. Looks like Ymir was able to get out of there. They're kind of deep in our jungle. We might be able to get a pick or two here. Kepri goes down to our Ymir. Hades is ulting. We're going to see if we can get some damage onto him. Neath is here as well. Not a favorable fight at all. That's a second triple kill for this Hades this game. Tier just goes super deep. We're going to cast our ability. We get some damage off. Use our three to create some separation. Now that we don't have our three, we got to be a little bit careful on what we engage. Since the enemy team was able to get the Primal Fury, they are getting an enhanced wave right now in each lane. If you look at the minimap, the red dots in left lane are a little bit different than the normal red dots. This means that it is the enhanced wave from the Gold Fury. Gonna go ahead, rotate back mid, clear our lane, and the enemy team drops Fire Giant. So at this point in the game, I think we have entered the late game. Everyone is kind of creeping up on level 20. People are making plays for objectives. We get our line attack off on a Nox. We're gonna get our two off on a Nox. Get some decent damage. We use our one that's gonna silence her. We're just gonna step out of her silence. Hit her with the two, and we're able to get the pick. But they keep running Hades is on our Ymir. We're going to see if we can cut him off at all. We use our one, get some damage. Hades uses his silence. He's using his ultimate. We're going to go ahead and use our three to do some damage and jump out of there. We're going to use our one. We're able to get the pick onto him. We're going to fall back. Our team is pushing this Kepri. It looks like it might just be this Kepri. So we're going to kind of push up, but we're not really looking to fight anything right here. We're just going to go ahead and hit a camp. Probably back here. No eyes on the enemy. The only objective on the map is Pyromancer. Be right back. At any point in the game, this game could end based off of a deicide. If they can get a deicide and push our right Phoenix, then we might be in some trouble. If we can get a deicide and push their left Phoenix, they might be in some trouble. So now it's kind of all about the team fights. They have a pretty nasty team fight, but so do we if we can sync everything together. <gasps> Neath is able to get the pick onto Ymir. We get a little bit of damage off right there. We're aiming for their squishies, but we're actually targeting Capri. We should be aiming for their squishies. Get a little bit of damage onto the dodgy. She's going to ult. We're going to turn away, try to get outside of her range. She jumps back in. We miss our two. We're going to use our three. Not enough damage to get the pick. We're going to use our one. Maybe it was. Capri did just use our ultimate. We're going to start running away. Three people pressuring us. I'm not sure what Freya is doing over in left.
Neath is pressuring us, we might be able to get a pick on Neath. We're doing some decent damage. Hades is about to be on our Phoenix though, so we're going to rotate over. He's starting to rotate mid. Try to get a little bit of damage off. Somebody's throwing up the surrender, and I think this game has just became a game of attrition. Who can stay focused in this game the longest? Right now, I feel like our team is just picking bad fight after bad fight. We could definitely use some more wards on the map. So right now, our main objective is to just defend, try to get our team back up before we really engage anything. We hear a Neath ability. She's pressuring our Ymir. We're going to see if there's anything we can do to help him out. They're on Gold Fury. We cast a 2. Maybe we can just get him off of it. Neath got some decent damage on us. We're definitely going to want to avoid any of these. We're going to use our Aegis to avoid the Neath ult. And it looks like we're able to get out. So we're just going to go ahead and back. After going into Chronos Pendant, we are going to be going into Hide of the Urchin. Yeah, Hide of the Urchin. It's going to provide 30 physical protections, 30 magical protections, 250 health, 250 mana. Anytime we get a kill or an assist on an enemy god, we're going to gain 3 magical protections, 3 physical protections per stack. At 7 stacks, this item is going to evolve, gaining a health shield that gains stacks every 2 seconds. Each stack provides 10% of 100 health plus 5 per level. So, Baba Yaga is able to stack the Book of Talk, Warlock Staff, and the Hide of the Urchin really well due to her passive. We're going to rotate left, see if we can protect left Phoenix from these two people. We're going to hit the minion wave. Kind of pointless, we really just need to be pressuring Neath. We use our ultimate to try to get a little bit of damage off. We're aiming for... We were aiming for Neath, but she backflipped out, so we kind of wasted our ultimate. We should have probably started that fight with our ultimate going onto the Neath. Just come in all big and scary and see if we can get them off of the Phoenix. Hades is about to push middle lane, so we are going to have to have somebody rotate over. Freya looks like she's got it. Hades rotates over to us. We're going to use our 3 to get out of the Hades ultimate. We're going to use our 1. We're going to have to peel back a little bit. Neath is charging up her ultimate. We do have our beads. Does not look like she targeted us. Robin's able to go in, get a pick onto the Neath. Looks like... We might be able to get a pick onto this Kepri, but we have somebody pushing middle lane and we have somebody pushing left lane right now. Looks like Tyr is going to rotate and try to clean up the middle lane. I don't think we're going to be able to chase that Kepri. He gets increased movement speed whenever he uses his ultimate. So when he popped his ultimate on himself, he's going to be able to zoom on out of there. Looks like they gave up the siege in mid. Probably not sieging over and right. They probably pulled back to go for some camps. We're going to make our way to our red buff. No sight on the enemies. They might be on fire giant. We could definitely use some wards over there. That'd be very helpful. Enemy team gets the pyromancer. So our little assumption was correct. They were over on fire giant. But they were on Pyromancer, not Fire Giant. So we're just going to keep playing defense this game. I feel like our team keeps giving the other team the advantage. We're going into bad fights, getting picked, and then it becomes a 4v5. And it's just defend. I feel like we actually had a really good game with Baba Yaga mid. This game goes on for a long, long time. And they have some pretty aggressive characters. We've only died twice, and I feel like we're kind of in the right spot at the right time. A lot of the time, this game. Tears able to get the pick onto Neath. We're going to get our one onto the Kepri. Dodgy's pressuring somebody. We're going to kind of pull into the jungle. We don't want them to direct their attention onto us. 
They're kind of focusing the tier. Tier is super tanky, so we're not too concerned. We are gonna like cast abilities near him to try to help him out. We use our one, unfortunately it does not connect. Hades and Kepri are now pressuring me. This is what I was trying to avoid. They don't care about tier, but they are gonna chase me all the way to the Phoenix line. Maybe not all the way to the Phoenix line. They're gonna pull back and go for the Kepri. Or not the Kepri, the tier. These are two, doing some good damage onto that dodgy. That we are not, however, doing great damage to the Kepri. And that's because we do not have Soul Reaver online. That is going to be the item we sell our boots for. Soul Reaver is going to provide us 95 magical power, 300 mana, 10% magic penetration. If the target has below 2,000 health, our abilities are going to deal 2% of the target's maximum health. If the target has above 2,750 health, we're going to be dealing 7% of the target's maximum health. In between 2,000 health and 2,750 health, it's going to scale from 2% to 7%. Subsequent hits on the same target do half the bonus damage. So this is going to make it to where we're dealing relevant damage to Kepri. Every single time we damage him with an ability, we're going to be removing a percentage exactly of his health. On top of the just normal damage that we do. So we are trying to protect this left Phoenix. Try to get the Phoenix to fully come back without having any fire minions in this lane. Pressuring it. While we're over here, there's a team fight going on in mid. We're able to get a pick. So this might be the first favorable team fight in a while. Let's see if we can convert anything. Q dash is in. We're kind of going to the back line. Looks like our team is actually getting pushed as soon as we step up. We miss our two. Robin is able to get a pick onto two. Needs probably about to backflip. Oh, she just made it look like she's going to backflip. Now she backflips. Ray is able to get a pick. That's a full D aside. There we go. Looks like we have a fearless we on our hands. might be able to make a play here. Finally, some peace and quiet. So the they're all down. Soonest respawn is Kepri in 20 seconds. We have enough time to get the tower and go for Fire Giant. Or we have enough time to get the tower and the Phoenix. I do not think we have time for both. Or all three, I should say. The tower, Phoenix, and then Fire Giant. The enemy team probably will be respawning by the time we make it to Fire Giant and start trying to burn it down. We're going to go ahead and just start tanking for this Freya. Minions are now here. So we get the tower, we get the Phoenix. They're making the call for Fire Giant. I think we could have gone for left right there. Probably gotten the two Phoenixes and then backed up. We do not have any wards to drop and we also have a pretty penny in the pocket. Our team starts up fire. We have our fray here, so we are dealing kind of the most amount of damage that we can. We see Nox is here. We're able to get the fire giant. Their whole team is here crashing on us right after we get fire giant. So everyone on our team is a little bit weak from fire giant. Everyone on their team is full health because they just respawn. We get a little bit of damage off onto the Kepri and to the Hades. Dodgy and Neath are nearby. Ideally, we want to try to get damage onto them before going to the tankier targets. Ymir just locks us in, so we're going to fully commit. We're going to pressure mid a little bit while Tyr chases the Neath down. Kepri's here. We do not have eyes on the Hades. Hades is on the left. Ymir is basic attacking that tower with no minions. Is that what's going on? No, he had minions. Okay. I was a little worried there for a second. Just Hades and Kepri up. Looks like a great time to pressure something. We're going to go for the Gold Fury. Ymir is kind of cut out of position. We're able to get the Oni Fury. The Oni Fury is going to spawn an enhanced wave in each wave or in each lane. We're going to go ahead and get our movement speed potion. 
our damage pot, sell our boots, and then pick up Soul Reaver. Which still leaves us with a pretty penny in our pocket. We probably should have upgraded our beat. And our Aegis with that money. So right now, we have the advantage in the late game. We have a Phoenix down. We have Gold Fury Waves pushing up. So if we can convert something right here, this could be huge. If we don't, we might get countered pretty hard. I feel like they've been winning the team fights. We just won one, and then we're able to capitalize on a lot of things around the map from it. Kind of put the momentum in our favor. I feel like if we don't get anything here, we're going to lose all that momentum. Middle Phoenix is going to be respawning soon. We're just going to focus on farming up the minions, try to get some pressure for whenever this Phoenix respawns. Right now, we might be a little bit too split. We have three people on left, Ymir over in right, Hades rotates right, I'm over in mid. We're able to get a pick, things are looking good. We're going to rotate left, see if we can't help out. They are able to save the left Phoenix. We use our three to kind of get out. We use our beads and our Aegis. We use our one. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate and just kind of run away with it. Super unfortunate. So we did not get the left Phoenix and the middle Phoenix is about to respawn while we have no pressure. That might have been the worst case scenario. I guess if we all went down and they just marched up mid and won the game, that would be the worst case scenario, but... We had a lot of pressure and advantage right there, and after they defended that, we've kind of lost all of it. We no longer have the enhanced minion waves coming in from the Oni Fury. We no longer have Fire Giant, and we no longer have Fire Minions after this last metal wave. So now it's kind of even playing field. No team really has an advantage, which is not good for us. We needed that advantage. We're going to go ahead and pick up our red buff. We need to get some vision on the map. We only see the Kepri, Hades, and Nox. Our team is pretty far back, so we're going to want to stay on our half of the map. At least until we can group up, maybe get some more vision on the enemy team. Freya's pushing right. There's three people in mid. We did some decent damage with our two onto that dodgy right there. Tyr is just going in, causing the whole team to chase him. So we feel obligated to come in and help. We get our one off onto the Hades. We get our two off, get some good damage there. I think we tag two people. We're going to use our one. We get body blocked by our house. Ymir goes down to the dodgy. We have two people on us, so we're going to start running away. So, Tyr started that fight. Two people die. I look up. He's at blue. Frey is just now rotating from right to mid. Our late game team fight hasn't really been tested yet. I feel like this game has gone on so long that people are kind of forgetting to team fight, to group up, to play smite well. Instead, they're kind of just charging down lanes. Which, you know, sometimes that works, a lot of the time it does not. I also feel like Tyr sold two people in mid. He started that fight and then did nothing, really. But that is alright. Frey is able to get a pick onto the Nox in mid. We have Hades on us. We are pretty tanky between the hide of the... Urchin, I always forget what it's called, because there's Hide of the Nemean Lion and Hide of the Urchin. Hide of the Urchin and Warlock Staff, we are pretty tanky. 
So we're not going to be a one kit burn kind of opponent. You're going to have to use at least two people's kits to get us. I don't think Dodgy could solo us. I don't think Hades could solo us. But if they were together, they could probably get me. We are able to get the Primal Fury. The Primal Fury is going to make it to where we do 5% more damage to all jungle camps. This can stack up to three times throughout the game. So if you get five, three Primal Furies, you're going to gain 15% extra damage to jungle camps. And this is important because Fire Giant is considered a jungle camp. So right now, we have the potential to get something right here. Neath and Nox just responded. Frey's all the way in left. We have four people in mid. Tyr is leaving. So now it is a... 4v5 in the best case. Freya is probably going to get picked right here. We're going to try to rotate over, see if we can... Nope. So now it is a 3v5 with Tyr coming up mid. It's... Our late game team fights were just not good this game. A lot of small little things that made it very difficult to just even stay grouped up as five people. So we're kind of pulling back through jungle. We're going to see if we can cast any abilities from cover. Ymir gets picked. We're going to cast our two, cast our one. Hades dashes under our one. We get silenced out of our three. We're going to have to use our ultimate to survive right here. We're just going to throw our witch fire straight down. If they chase us, they'll get damaged. Ravana is able to get the pick onto one. We're going to use our one, get a little bit of damage off. Ravana is able to get a double kill. Dodgy uses her ultimate. I think he's about to go down. Tier goes down. Three people. And it's just me and the Rivana left. We're able to dodge the Kepri pool. Fat wave over and right. We're going to go over there and see if we can clean it up. Robin's able to get another double kill. Very nice. So Rivana's kind of going off. With four people down on the enemy team, you'd think that would give us a huge advantage, but it's really just me, Ravana, and Freya just came back up. We might be able to make a play for Fire Giant. In fact, that might be the best thing we can do right now. They just have the Kepri up for another 25 seconds. We need the Freya and the Ravana to get fire. We can't solo it, we can't do it with two. We need all three. At least Freya. Freya plus one. So we are at full build. We're just going to make sure that we're picking up power pots whenever we back. We should have upgraded our relics already. I always forget to do that. We're able to get the fire giant. Kepri came over through an ability and then ran away. So you remember 20 minutes ago when I said this game could go either way. It all depends on the Dia side. Still can. We just haven't had a good push, and we have been able to defend against the enemy team whenever they have good pushes. We're going to use our Aegis and our Beads, and then we're going to cast our Ultimate to get that shield. We're going to start casting our Witchfire Bolts. But we're really trying to run away right here. Nox is kind of pressuring us. Right here, we have three red, a blue, and a green. So we're going to save that in our potion slot. And we're going to pull out the three blue, red, and green. We're going to use this one. We're going to save the damage one. We are going to back by a power pot. So that might be my bad on this team fight because now we have four players pushed up. I'm pretty far back. We do not have any eyes on the enemy team. We're going to go ahead and clean up this fat wave over in left. Nox is in mid. Our team is grouping to make a push for left without any minions and while they have five people up. So, this is... I feel like they're just over the game. 48 minutes in, it's a game of attrition. Charging in there with two people while they have five people up is just not a very tactical play. 
they were not able to get the Phoenix. We lost one. We lose another. Now it's a 3v5. We're going to cast our abilities. Ymir back, so now it's a 2v5. We're just going to sell tier. We can't do a thing for you, bud. So we're going to go back, and now we are defending. One bad offensive push equates to you need one good defensive. Stand, not push. I don't know. I don't know what that expression would be. It's 49 minutes into the video. Your boy's getting a little tired. So, we are coming. I <laughs> remember this. I'm like, they will never find me. And then my hut just charges me down and gives away my position. We might be able to get a pick onto this Neath Dodgy. We use our 3 to get there and use our ultimate, but we died from that earlier, so we're trying to be very careful. We use our 3 to get out of the Hades ultimate. We're going to use our 2. Gets a little bit of damage. They are able to get the left Phoenix, and it looks like Nox is able to get the right Phoenix. We're able to get the pick on 2-1. Nox is rotating the left. So they got... That's unfortunate. So they got two Phoenixes, now they're pulling back. The next push that they make is probably going to be a game ending one. Exactly what I want. <sighs> so they were able to get all of that from the push by the Freya and Tyr in left lane. I don't know. <laughs> The thought process there. Hey, we don't see anyone on the map. They're all alive. <laughs> Let's go attack left Phoenix without any minions, without the lane pushed up. What can go wrong? That's just me being a little salty. But that's alright, we're able to get the Oni Fury. We're gonna go ahead and back because we are on defense mode. There's no reason for us to try to be pushing anything. We have four people up, we have two Phoenixes down. I think this Ravana doesn't like me for some reason. Not sure what's going on there. He had like an argument with me the first rotation he made to mid. He gave me some crap there. And I feel like he's just giving me some crap now. Not sure what I did. I feel like I'm having a pretty good game. Anyway, we're going to clean up this left lane. We were able to get the Pyromancer. So, we have fire minions pushing left lane, fire minions pushing middle lane. Their enemy team is kind of camping fire giant, waiting for it to respawn. So we're going to clear this wave and we're going to back. The entire enemy team is on the right side of the jungle. That's two down. Our damage is down. Yep, I get pinged because I was defending left lane instead of pushing up a regular minion wave in right lane. So, we are defending. We're going to be sitting at this Phoenix line trying to make our best attempt at saving the Titan. Dodgy dashes in. We really need to focus their Hunter. We're going to use our three. We get some damage off, we're going to go ahead and use our ultimate, we're able to get the pick onto one, but they are able to get the our titan. Well, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by, I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time, bye bye.